uh, my name is Tony Blank. I'm developer evangelist for Context.io. Uh, show of hands, who's heard of Context.io before? I just always ask people that question. Cool, thank you. Um, so today I'm going to talk to you about uh, why API platforms need developer evangelists. So uh, also I just want to say that uh, that chubby kid is not me. Uh, I was a, a chubby kid. That's me as a chubby kid. I just beat Super Mario Brothers 2. Uh, the Mario Brothers where the designers uh, took drugs, I think. Um, anyway, so uh, evangelists wear lots of hats. Uh, that's something that we do. Uh, but there's one thing that we primarily do. Uh, a lot of people think that we have a marketing or advertising role. And while we, we do a, a bit of that, that's not exactly what we do. Sales, same thing. Um, we impact sales, but we, we don't sell anything. Uh, training or support, we certainly uh, help our users uh, learn how to use the API and help them out, but that's not the primary thing. The, the main thing that we do is we help out developers. We help out engineers, we help out startups. Uh, a loftier way to put this is that we accelerate innovation wherever possible. Um, and it's, it's, it's interesting because if, if you look at what an API actually is, it's a piece of, of technology that helps developers do something. And evangelists are like a, a, uh, the, the, the API personified. One thing that's really important is that there's no bullshit in evangelism because technical people and engineers will pick up on that and identify bullshit. So you really have to know what you're talking about. You have to be a subject matter expert. Uh, and you also have to avoid any kind of, of marketing pitch because that just does not uh, resonate with developers. So there's two sides of the same coin as to the, the two main kinds of activities. Uh, there's something that I like to call direct evangelism. Uh, this is also, uh, you might uh, also uh, hear of this as like event marketing. So it could be conferences like this, could be hackathons. Uh, by the way, Swift, do you recognize that, that guy up there? Um, could be meetups. Uh, meetups are a great way to, to uh, mingle with, with engineers and developers. Also, there's almost always beer, which is fantastic. Um, Martin, an evangelist from SunGrid, gave a talk at API Strat on the ROI of uh, beer at meetups uh, it, it, uh, as it impacts evangelism, which is an interesting talk. I encourage you all to check that out. Uh, also, mentoring is something that uh, evangelists can do, and it's a great way to meet uh, early stage startups, uh, a lot of times pre-MVP products, so it's a great time to introduce your API to them, see if you can help them solve any tough problems. The other side of that coin is content strategy. So it could be things like uh, writing uh, blog posts, something that evangelists do. Could be social media, uh, you probably see me tweet at this event. Uh, it could be uh, code samples. A lot of times customers ask me, uh, you know, how to, how to use the API in a certain way and I, I have to write some, some kind of code. Uh, documentation and client libraries is something else that evangelists uh, very often maintain. So personally, I've skewed a lot of my own activity uh, towards the event side of things. I feel it plays on my own strengths. Uh, but the content side of, of evangelism is uh, very uh, important. Also, what evangelists do, uh, it varies greatly based on the size of the evangelist team. Uh, so for instance, at Context.io, I'm the only evangelist, so I, I wear lots of hats. I, I do everything by myself. But uh, at, at a larger API company where you have a team of evangelists and a team of people supporting you, uh, then the evangelist might only be doing, say, event marketing and blog posts, and they, they won't do, do uh, uh, a lot of the other activities. So uh, a few of these other extra jobs that have to happen kind of tangential to, to evangelism is things like customer interaction. Uh, I send out emails to everybody that, that, that signs up for an API key, for instance, and I, I try to talk to everybody that's using the API. Um, event discovery is something that takes up a lot of my time. You know, which events should I be going to? Uh, budget is also really important. Uh, event sponsorship is expensive, travel is expensive. Uh, swag is expensive, so it's really uh, important to, to keep an eye on the bottom line. Uh, and travel planning, it, it might not seem like that much of, of a job, but uh, I'm on the road probably 80% of the time, so just figuring out which hotel to stay in, which airport to fly into, is, uh, it can be uh, a job. There's, there's lots of different things 
that evangelists can do. Uh, and one thing to note, it's, uh, evangelism is uh, notorious for having a, one of the highest burnout rates uh, in tech. So that's a whole separate conversation that, that we can have over uh, maybe drinks tonight or something. Uh, I'm actually extremely jet lagged right now. I, I flew in this morning uh, from the States uh, and I still have that airplane scotch smell. I don't know if you guys know that. Um, so anyway, uh, the value of developer evangelism is, uh, is something that it can be a, a tricky thing to measure. Uh, and I'll talk about that in a second. Um, one of the main values that evangelists provide to an API platform is raising awareness about the API. That's certainly the first thing that a customer has to have before they use your, your API is they have to know about it, know how they can use it. So as an evangelist, I can talk to, to customers, interact with them, make sure they know about uh, what the API does. It also gives the uh, API a face. Uh, I, I make myself very available to all of our customers. Uh, I enjoy talking to, to people that are using Context.io and seeing uh, the kinds of innovative things they're building on the API. Uh, that's one of the things that I really enjoy about my job. But for our customers, there's a, a lot of value in, in knowing me, in knowing that there's a person they can talk to. It's not just a support link. Uh, that's something that is vitally important to an API platform. Also, one thing that's really interesting, uh, a value that evangelists can provide is that uh, through all of the conversations that I have with people uh, at events and, and hackathons and whatnot, is that I, I can learn what really resonates uh, about uh, the API. So I learn about what kinds of features people really enjoy. So like with, for Context.io, uh, our webhooks are something that, that people really latch on to. Uh, that's where we push a notification to your app if an email comes into your user's email account. Uh, that's one of our like killer features right now. So that, that's something that I, I've discovered. Uh, a lot of people really uh, latch on and, and, and enjoy that. So by talking to, to people at lots of different events, I can A-B test how I talk about the API thousands of times. Uh, I've talked to over 5,000 people uh, this year, so that every chance is an opportunity to try to figure out uh, what is the best way to talk about your API. Also, uh, evangelists can, uh, can provide a great help to your product team. Uh, in talking to customers out in the field, you, you can figure out why your API might not be a great fit for their uh, uh, app. Um, you can also learn uh, about maybe some features that you have. Maybe if you have an extra parameter, uh, then it'll make things a lot easier for customers. So, so uh, I end up working very closely with our, our product team. And our product team is just our product manager named Dan. Dan's from Texas. That's not a picture of Dan, but I like to think that's, that's what he does whenever I'm, I'm not visiting him. So uh, success metrics is something that's very difficult with evangelism. And notice I, I call it success metrics, not ROI. Uh, ROI is something that's very difficult to, to prove. Uh, for instance, uh, I, I paid money to sponsor this fantastic event. And, uh, yeah. and, uh, and you know, while people here will learn about Context.io, uh, and even if you happen to sign up for an API key, uh, odds of you building a successful app on an API key that you downloaded at, at a conference or something uh, is very, very slim. If, say, down the road you have a use case for Context.io, you will probably sign up for another API key then. So it's hard to, to actually track any kind of activity to certain kinds of events. So that's why ROI, return on investment, is not really a great term to use. Uh, and I, I use success metrics. So uh, here's a couple of, of the things that we track. Uh, the number of people that I uh, engage with at, at an event, so I'm kind of doing a, a estimate of how many people are in this room right now, and I'll, I'll, I'll report that. Um, key signups is something that uh, is interesting to look at as well. Uh, you can geocode uh, the IP address uh, from where the users uh, signed up uh, for the, an, an API key, and you can try to tie that to an event. Now, understanding that, that an API key signup is kind of like a really intense uh, web page view, essentially, right? The odds of them building something in that moment are, are probably fairly slim. So an API key signup could be related more like maybe a, a, a mailing list signup or something. But it means that, that you've engaged with an engineer or a developer enough to, uh, to, to increase their interest level enough so that they want to explore the API. 
In fact, if everybody could sign up for a Context.io API key right now and visit our homepage a couple times, that'd really help me out a lot. So. Um, it's also important to measure traffic like to your blog and measure social media engagement since these are activities that evangelists can do. Uh, that's also an important thing to look at. Those topics are fairly well understood, so I'm not going to talk that much about them. So this year, I was in a fairly, uh, what I believe to be a, is a fairly unique situation uh, in the field of evangelism. So I'm the sole uh, evangelist for Context.io, and all of last year I worked only in North America doing events. And this year I moved to London for four months, uh, and I worked only in Europe. So I was able to geocode all of the uh, key signups for the four months last year and the four months this year and see which ones are from North America or which ones are, are from Europe. So the impact of having an evangelist working in a region uh, was that we saw a 270% increase in key signups in Europe over the four months that, that, that I worked here. So, so th that's one very direct way you can tie a real number to the, the effort of, of an evangelist. So uh, now I'm, I'm going to talk uh, about a couple lessons from the road that I've uh, learned as an uh, uh, evangelist. Uh, one important lesson, of course, is the fact that, uh, that, that you can wear your underwear four times safely. So normal, uh, then reversed, then inside out, normal and reversed, right? You, you got that one, right, Swift? Yeah. Um, but really, uh, this is not what, what the road looks like. Uh, it actually looks like this. Uh, and, and this, and I've got about 50 more of those pictures. Uh, fortunately, it also looks like this and that. There, yeah, Amsterdam, yeah, uh-huh, okay. Oh, th that was actually API days in Barcelona. Uh, thanks, Mash Ape, for those beers. Uh, I got some more, okay, all right. Um, anyway, the, the, uh, the main lesson that I wanna talk about is uh, going back to, to the, the value of honing how you pitch the API. Uh, that's something, uh, I, you know, I certainly come from an engineering background, so when I first started this job uh, over a year and a half ago, um, I started uh, talking about very specific details uh, about what the API does and how it works. And I started very much like in, in the weeds. Uh, because as an engineer, as a technical person, those are the details that got me really excited about, about the API. And, uh, over the course of talking to a lot of people, I learned that it's best to start really broad and learn as much as you can about the person you're talking to. And then once you understand uh, the problem that that person's trying to solve, then you can see if there's a fit uh, with your API to help them solve a problem. So this is the obligatory funnel slide. Every slide at a, at a tech conference needs a funnel. And also since this is an API conference, I have to contractually mention Kinlane. Um, so uh, a great way to do this is to uh, provide concrete use cases for your API. So for instance, uh, it's great to talk about current customers. So, so there's uh, a couple of customers that use Context.io that I mention often. Uh, Contactually is, is, is a fantastic uh, company that, that uses us, that helps to, to manage contacts. So if I'm talking to somebody who's trying to solve something around uh, contacts or they want to share their app with email contacts, then I, I can talk about what Context.io can do. Uh, for them, then I can also uh, mention a, a couple of other customers that are they're getting this a similar kind of value out of their uh, their API, uh, and the same kind of concept of starting broad uh, is uh, is something that you can do uh, at a, at a hackathon. So, uh, is everybody here familiar with what a hackathon is? A scattering of hands. Uh, so um, a hackathon is an event where a developer has, uh, a, a t usually a team of, of developers have a limited amount of time to build an app from start to finish. Uh, and APIs, uh, companies uh, frequently sponsor these events because it's a great way to get uh, some hands-on time with the API. Uh, and most evangelists get a, a couple of minutes at the start of uh, the hackathon to try to get people excited about the API. And uh, when I first started doing this, I again, I started uh, from a very technical st uh, standpoint. I tried to take, take uh, uh, people through signing up for a key and, and adding a user to the API and do all of that during a hackathon pitch. And that just wasn't that interesting uh, to people. So I'm gonna actually demonstrate what the Context.io hackathon pitch is. So again, Swift has seen this a lot of times because he, he's been in a lot of hackathons with me, so I apologize. Um, 
Cool, so just everybody, uh, pretend that you're uh, at a hackathon and uh, pretend that, that you've seen about 10 other API companies talk about their, their API, okay, so. All right, how's everybody doing today? Good. Doing good? St stand up for a second, stand up and stretch, because you've been sitting down for a while. Yeah, that feels good, right? All right, cool. Uh, my name is Tony Blank, and you can have a seat if you want. Uh, or keep standing, uh, we can keep things casual. Uh, I'm developer evangelist for Context.io. Context.io is an email data API that makes it easy to build applications on top of your user's email data. So how does it work? After your user gives your app permission, then you can make RESTful API calls and fetch things like contacts, files, messages, threads from your user's email accounts. And we have webhooks too, so we can push notifications to your app uh, if something happens inside of your user's, e uh, your user's email account. And why do you want to use Context.io during this hackathon? Because we are giving away a new car. Come on. Drawing signed by me. It's that drawing, and I, I, I drew that myself. So. But no, seriously, if, 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 you, uh, if you use the API and we like it a lot, we will give you a prize. It, it could be a gadget. Uh, it could be money. And, and we will get money in, in, your, in, your, in your country's currency. It's, it doesn't have to be dollars. Uh, could be booze. I'll, if, if you like drinking, we'll, we'll buy you some booze. But maybe you just want a puppy. Uh, if you use Connex Studio, I will get you a puppy. But puppies are pretty cheap, so I'll get you 10 puppies. <laughs> so it's very easy to get started. Just visit uh, context.io, click the orange button, sign for an API key. We have an interactive console, so you can play around with the API without writing uh, any code. It's great in a hackathon setting to explore and plan your hack out. Also, we are hiring, so please work with us. I am incredibly awesome. Uh, I could spend the rest of my time talking about that, but. Uh, but you, you have a, a hack to work on. So thank you very much. I'm Tony, and I'll be around all weekend and enjoy hacking on, on your projects. Thank you very much. Cool. I, I, just, I love it when people applaud me, so that's why it's happened a couple times during this talk. Um, in fact, after, uh, uh, after the talk, when I'm walking around, please just, if you see me, feel free to applaud. I'd, I'd, I'd like that. Um, so anyway, uh, from the, 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 the hackathon pitch, there's really only three things that I want the hackers to take away. Notice I, I didn't talk anything about e exactly what the API, uh, API does or anything technical or, or didn't write any code. And there's some hackathon pitches that, uh, that, that do live coding and are absolutely fantastic. So th this is just one, one take on it. But the, the three things that I want uh, people to know is context.io, email data, and Tony Blank, me, because uh, it's through those personal conversations when, when you can really detail the value of the, of the API to the, the individual. So it's really, I just want people to take away a couple of things and then follow up uh, in, uh, in, in additional conversations throughout the rest of, of the weekend. So that uh, is pretty much the, the slides that I have. Uh, I, I want to leave everybody with, with one a uh, final thought about uh, dev outreach and evangelism. Um, as API companies, we should really compete on product, not on our dev outreach programs. So that means that uh, all of us evangelists, we really should be collaborating and figuring out what makes the most sense to developers. What do developers expect from an API company? How can we uh, help create standards uh, as far as API design? How can we, we best talk to developers? These, these are things that we should all collaborate on and work together. So it's really important in the evangelist community uh, for all of us to, to collaborate and, and, and work with, with each other uh, because uh, it, since we share customers, our customers always end up winning. In fact, uh, I mean, I think a great example, I've, I've even seen the, uh, the male jet and Sengrid evangelists treat each other almost like normal human beings. So it, it can be done. <laughs> So uh, again, thank you very much. My name's Tony Blank. Follow me on Twitter. I'm the Tony Blank. I tweet a lot about beer, uh, mostly, so you can join my parents in being ashamed of me on Twitter. So, <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you. Great. Always great talk about evangelism. Do you have a, one question? Yeah. Oh, evangelists talk to evangelists. 
Hi, Tony. Great talk as usual. I just had one question because I've been thinking a lot about all these things recently, and I was really wondering: Are we really dev evangelist anymore? Because uh, yeah, developer evangelist, developer advocate, developer relations, whatever we call it, really means we are evangelizing developers. But more and more when I'm at events, I happen to be talking to more business people, sometimes business people, not technical at all, but in interested in what happens in their industry and just coming to events. Um, I talk more and more both business and, and technical stuff at the same time, but it's, it really requires like to know uh, everything about the business of your company, your product, and all these kind of things. And I really don't feel our main target is essentially developers anymore, but like any kind of startup people. So I, I might be wondering, is developer evangelist still the right title, or should we call ourselves now just like evangelist or product evangelist? Yeah, I mean, I uh, think that's a really good point. I mean, uh, I, I also talk uh, to non-developers a lot of times. But going back to the fact that, that since we do talk to developers and engineers, and the fact that we can't be full of shit, um, you know, that, that, that tells me that an evangelist needs to have that technical background and that, that technical depth uh, to be able to have those conversations. Um, but I think that is a great point. I mean, I, I probably, uh, in, in my personal conversations with people, I probably only talk to developers maybe half the time. Um, but, uh, but, you know, uh, so I mean, should we call ourselves developer evangelists or, or maybe API advocates or something? That, that's a good, good question. Hi, I'm Eric. Hello. Uh, we're from Twin. We are hiring an evangelist right now. So, so are we. Any um, any advice you may have for us to you know, find the right person? I was like thinking, any developer uh, that's curious to move into a more external world would be a, a, a good evangelist. What, what would you recommend? And it's a question open to anybody that would want to help me in this uh, search. Sure, yeah, it, it is difficult to find uh, API uh, evangelists uh, because, uh, again, we, since we have to have those technical skills, uh, that, that is a certain kind of, of person typically, right? Uh, but then we also have to be extroverted and be able to stand on stage like this and talk to all of you uh, very beautiful people. So um, that can be difficult. So I, I would certainly say start by looking uh, for uh, people that probably have like a senior software engineer title, uh, that have a couple of years of shipping code un uh, uh, under their belts. Um, that will ensure that they have the technical experience. And probably a lot of engineers, after they, they work on a project for a couple of years, uh, want to switch and do something else. So it might be something where if you have an extroverted uh, engineer, it might be something that you could maybe uh, cultivate and nurture uh, evangelism in them. Um, but uh, also, I, I would really not understate the amount of travel. Uh, now, not all evangelists have a crazy travel schedule, and, uh, and I, I think mine is probably more insane than a lot of other uh, evangelists. Uh, so y the, the, the travel is certainly a part of it, but it doesn't have to be all of it. Um, but uh, really understanding, you know, what does it mean to be on the road 50% of the time, you know? And, and uh, you know, be sure that they're looking at the, the reality of that, not, not the the romantic side of things. I have a deep question for you. Oh, sorry, I will let you finish, of course. I have a deep question for you is, um, you know, a French uh, psychologist and sociologist, Boris Cyrulnik, mm -hmm. uh, say that uh, when you want to teach mathematics to a young uh, John, uh, to John, which is five years old, the first thing you have to learn, and you know, the first thing you have to know is not mathematics, it's John. So do you say a developer evangelist, whatever the product, this is why maybe it's not product evangelist, I don't know. The first thing he has to know is the developer which is in front of him, the project and everything, instead more than the product. Yeah, yeah, I mean, and, and uh, I would completely agree with that. And in fact, that, that kind of goes back to uh, that funnel slide that I had uh, where I, I was talking about uh, it's important to learn uh, uh, what it, uh, it, it is that the person you're talking to does and, and really detail the value of your API to their specific case. So thank you for your presentation and I'm sorry for my English, I'm from Russia. Actually we have a lot of APIs, we have about 40 public APIs but I have a problem with developers. Uh, for example, when I uh, come to developer and try to uh, 
try to find in you evangelists, I always uh, uh, have a feedback, something like, hey lady, I want to code, leave me, leave me alone. And it's a huge problem actually, maybe I'm not good in uh, explaining of opportunities for this job, and maybe you know how to motivate developer to be. Yeah, I mean, and that, that is a challenge because most people that are drawn to engineering really do love uh, writing code. Uh, and code writing is something that, that is a daily part of what evangelists right. do. Uh, unfortunately, it's rare that we get to work on the kinds of large projects. A lot of times it's code samples for client libraries and, and that kind of thing. Um, so you can certainly talk that up uh, and say that there is code writing. But if, if, uh, if an engineer just wants to, to, to ship code, uh, then maybe evangelism is not the right thing for them. Thank you, Tony. Thank you very much. Cool. Thank you very much. Thanks for listening.